This series is made possible by all of my patrons. More about that at the end of the video. Hello and welcome to the last installment of the Hoya Summer Camp. Today we are going to talk about one final topic, and that is how to display your Hoya, how to trellis your Hoya, and how to make rabbit fence trellises. There is a gnat flying around me. Why? Do not approach me. This is more of a hands-on topic and there are not really many rules here. I'm just gonna share with you what has worked best for me. I have complained many, many, many times about trellising and how it actually annoys me to trellis Hoyas and some problems that I have faced, but I do feel confident that I have figured out quite a lot of them. This is going to be a challenge with some of the Hoyas. Some of them really do not look very nice on the trellis and, you know, we're going to talk about these a bit later in the video, but first let's just try to trellis a couple of Hoyas. What I most commonly use these days are the rabbit fence trellises. They are very cheap, very easy to make, and I do like a unified look across my collection. I'm not one that will do different types of trellises, different types of pots. So in many cases I will make these rabbit fence trellises and sometimes I will buy the ladders. In situations where I will buy the ladders, it's usually a hoya that is not so easy to trellis. I find that carnosas for me personally look better on a ladder. That is my preference. I do have here a carnosa Brazil that has finally stopped reverting. And she does look very nice on this ladder trellis. There are some other examples, like my Hoya Obovata. I could not get that on a tower. It, you know, she's just not that pliable. A lot of the Hoyas that have really stiff vines will be difficult to trellis. I don't dislike these trellises. I think they're quite nice. You can actually kind of see that this one sort of stays upright almost even without the trellis, in the sense that it doesn't at all and it falls down. Okay, well, whatever. I don't think this would look very good on a rabbit fence. I kind of tried them out. This is what I do. I sort of look at the plant and I imagine there is already a rabbit fence and if I don't like how that looks, I just decide to go for something like this. It's very easy also to put Hoyas on these and they also don't cost a lot of money. So I do end up using them when I see that something just won't look as great on the rabbit fence trellis. But rabbit fence trellises are quite useful. You can trellis a pretty big Hoya on a trellis that is not so big. And I will show you the trick to how to do that. We have here a Hoya Nui. And as you can see, she has almost reached the end of the trellis here. This is what I typically do. When I put them on the trellis for the first time, I kind of like to go around so sort of to fill out the trellis as much as I can. But this is actually not a reason for us to extend this trellis. What I like to do, and this is where these trellises, the, these wide rabbit fence trellises come in handy, I will take it down and then I will wrap it tightly. So we can just go a little bit down here. So it doesn't need to be like this. This is what I will initially do to kind of get that nice look because no one likes the look of a bare trellis. But when they start to grow big, I will put them down and we can even kind of go lower here and sort of just put it somewhere here. Then of course we get this much tighter look, but also there is much more room for the plant to grow now. We can now just leave that as is, and then when this starts to grow, I'm probably just going to wrap it around loosely around the trellis, and then once it becomes very big, I will again try to make it tighter like we just did now. And then this way you can really use this trellis for a long time, provided that the plant of course stays in the pot for the long time. As I mentioned in my previous video, and as you have seen me repot some Hoyas, I will actually trellis some of them now. So this is a Hoya verticillata, formerly Hoya wybergiae, but that is definitely a verticillata. I'm going to use this trellis. It is quite wide. I used to make trellises that are not so wide. The diameter was smaller. And I actually do have an example here. I don't find these as useful. I was trying to save on the material to make more trellises, but I just don't find plants easy to trellis because it's way too small the, the diameter. So I'm recommending you to go something that is as wide as your pot. Now I will leave a cut out here and I will show you later how to make one of these. I will leave a cut out because obviously we have leaves at the bottom. So I kind of want to make life easier for myself. Now this Hoya, I can just gently wrap it around. Sometimes I will pull leaves through. Let's do a trial look here. Hmm. 
I actually do think I will wrap this one slightly tighter because we do have a long line here that I do not want to cut even though it doesn't have leaves it has a peduncle at the end and sometimes I will hide these which I will show you how to do in a second just need to figure out which way do we want to go so I don't want to go this way you see that kind of doesn't look nice so I will kind of just go this way and sometimes you know it's not so easy neither of the ways look good but we got to choose the one that looks best I'm just going to attach this here towards the bottom to kind of get that firmly there so it doesn't move and then we can see what to do with the rest of the vine do be gentle the vines are sometimes very easy to break in many cases you can bend Hoya to your will but in some it is not possible and then sometimes I will loop through these leaves Of course, it is much easier to do this sooner when your plant is smaller and when the vines are not so stiff, but you know, sometimes we also change our minds how we want our hood to look. So we have this long vine here and I'm going to hide it a bit behind the leaf. Not everyone needs to see how naked it is. And then just use the Velcro that we already have there. All right, and then we can do the same with this one. We don't need to go up because there's not much on this vine aside from the peduncle. So I'm going to wrap it around. And now actually the peduncle is in a great position for the photos, which we do appreciate, because sometimes they're not. And then, you know, I will just see where I need to add a bit more Velcro so this doesn't move. There we go. It's not the best work, but I feel considering what we have been given, it's not too bad. We do have another verticillata here and this one is longer, so we might be able to do more here. I did pod this one towards the center. I typically don't do that. I typically pod them towards the edge of the pot so it's easier to trellis. See, this is that case. It doesn't really look nice if I go this way. It doesn't really look nice if I go this way. We're just gonna have to try a couple of things here to see what will be best. This other vine though, definitely wants to go this way. You don't absolutely have to trellis your Hoya, of course. They can do okay if they're not trellised as well. They're just gonna grab onto whatever they can. So I do like to trellis them because, you know, I find it a space saving method as well. And then now we can decide here, do I want to make another loop to kind of make it look bushy or I can start going up. And I think I will go up here just to make this trellis look full. I just need to figure out what's happening with the vines. I'm basically a professional. I don't frequently retrellis my Hoyas, by the way, like I showed you with Hoya Nui. I just find that sometimes it's best to kind of leave them be. And usually like when I have this sort of end, I will just loop it through the rabbit fence and leave it without actually using the Velcro. For that and we have that rogue part down here and we're just gonna look how does it look best listen sometimes I will also cut these rogue parts if I don't like the way it looks it will depend on how much space I have for the propagations okay we kind of looped it through and now you can't really tell that that is the rogue part so that is actually not so bad I'm satisfied how that turned out I did show you a couple of Hoyas like this Hoya Surigaoensis, and this one, again, I don't think she is ready for the rabbit fence. You can see kind of if I put it, I don't know, I don't think she would look that great. I don't think I'm gonna like that too much, to be honest with you. See, I'm not in love with this look. I think for this one, temporarily, we can put a fence because I think she will look nice on the fence, and then when she grows a bit more, we can put in the rabbit fence. And I think same maybe for this joy. Let's see. Of course, these ugly leaves are in our way. Sometimes getting the trellis in is a bit of a challenge. Mm. This is, by the way, what I usually do when the plant is this small and the vine is growing. I don't, you don't want to wrap the vine too much, but I still want to kind of give it a bit support. So I think I will just do this for this one. And these vines that are very new and very thin will absolutely try to escape you. Don't get frustrated if you see it tomorrow that it <laughs> escaped. Just gonna gently loop it here and let it go and maybe add another one towards the base. So that is 
a temporary trellis and then when the leaves grow a bit more I will make sure to retrellis it. All right so this is a bad idea. It was supposed to be a couple of hours later until my batteries get charged but it is a week later and we are now going to make a rabbit fence trellis. You're distracting me. This cat just appeared in this yard. It is effectively a stray cat. I have seen her before. I think she used to belong to one of the neighbors. Or does? No, don't look at me. Don't look at me. I love cats, but no. It is very hot and humid out, so, you know, I'm just going to lift my hair. I thought getting out was going to be a great idea, but because there is more air, but it is actually very hot and humid today. We had the hottest night last night and today we have some rain. Are you trying to climb the chair? We have coffee, which is the most important thing that we have here, and then we have a couple of pots. I will make trellises for two different sizes. This is 12 centimeters, this is 15. Stop climbing the chair, girl. No, I cannot pet you right now. We will pet later, okay? We will do it later. You're not my cat. So this is the rabbit fence trellis. It does stay outside, so it is a bit dusty. I do clean it off before using and you know, we're just gonna ignore that. This is not a premium experience here. Now I do know the measurements. I have the trellises that I have made, but what I like to do is kind of take out the pot and sort of form the rabbit fence around it to kind of see how much I will need. And the reason why you have to do this is because obviously, you know, all the pots are different. I cannot give you the measurements for my pots. You have to figure out on your own for your own pots. Let's see, I think something like this. This seems to be able to fit. When you measure the rabbit fence, measure one extra field because you will need that field to sort of hook in the rabbit fence. You will see. I can just check and see that this is enough I don't know if camera shows that, but you can see that that is enough. But I will cut actually here. This is the circle that I made, but I will cut this extra field because I will use that to hook this in. So that is seven fields that I will need, but I will cut eight. Because this is sort of rectangle-ish, I cut these fields. This is the field that I count. I don't count this because that would look ridiculous. Just use some logic. <laughs> when it comes to the height, I usually do four or five of these vertical ones, I guess. And that will depend on how big my, how tall my rabbit fence is. This one has 12 fields, 12 one being kind of short. So I know that one trellis will be shorter than another. I will try to get three trellises out of this. And when, when I say four fields, that means one is going to be underground and three will be above ground. We count four down, one, two, three, four, so I know this will be the end of my rabbit fence trellis. We will end up with something like this and I just first bend it to get these under. So kind of inside. I don't know if that really shows. So we get them here and I just hook them like this and then over like that and then one more time towards the inside or like down. I mean it doesn't matter you can do it from the outside as well. I like to go in. In my mind it makes it stronger probably doesn't do anything but I do it like that. So the next thing what I like to do is kind of squish it and I find the best ways to kind of look at it like this and see what needs to be fixed to get an approximate cylindrical form. Some people do this by rolling on the rolling pin right? I don't because this is larger than a rolling pin and I think I get a pretty decent result. I do like to make a cut out here. I don't connect the last one here because I will make a big cut out. You don't have to do it again. You can just put the tower trellis like this inside the pot. Obviously you will need to adjust it a bit the bottom. I do like to make tower trellises like this so they go to the edge of the pot. I find it much easier to trellis that way. I would say that is a game changer for me because then the cylinder is much bigger, like the diameter is bigger. It just makes it easier. I find that with very narrow cylinders it's more difficult. So that is the rabbit fat, fat, <laughs> the fat rabbit trellis. The rabbit fence trellis. Easy to make. Some people don't even make a cylinder, but like half a cylinder. So 
Those are the ra rabbit fat tra What is it with the fat rabbits? So again, we just measure the pot, how much we will need. So I think this one needs nine. This is how much, again, we need. And then we cut one extra. Unfortunately, you will have some spare parts. Now we have this spare thing, which I guess can work as a ladder. I don't find it to be super stable. You can also bend this a little bit. What I used to do is I used to do like a sort of a triangular trellis and just put it like this. Okie dokie. What are you doing? Oh. It's very rude showering in front of the camera. We push it here to make a cylinder. Perfect. Now we can just trim this lower part once again. And that is the finished rabbit fence trellis with some spider webs <laughs> from the garden. And now I have two more trellises, million more to go. I'm just gonna show the people what, what you're doing. You're trying to climb the audacity. No, no, no. You are absolutely not allowed. Absolutely unallowing. Anyway, <laughs> the last part of this video is what Hoyas you should trellis and what Hoyas you shouldn't. And there isn't really a clear rule here. I'm going to tell you something from my own experience and something that I do. And I will provide a list of Hoyas that I don't trellis, but I keep them hanging or I keep them on my Hoya grow wall. Something that has a structure, a growing structure, like Hoya chingongensis, I would not trellis. I think this Hoya looks best when it is hanging. Similarly, like Hoya Bella, Hoya Angleriana, they look very, very nice when they can hang like this. I know that some people trellis Hoya Lacunosa, I don't. I know that some people trellis Hoya Bella, you can actually buy Hoya Bella trellis. I prefer them this way. They're going to do well any which way, really. And there are many, many Hoyas that are going to be able to, you know, you can go either way with them. You can just browse on the Instagram, see what other people have done. Do not touch my Hoya species. No, that is a prop. That is a prop. My advice here is just go and look on Instagram, see what other people have done and whether you like that or not. But they're going to do well trellised or untrellised some species. Some species, in my opinion, absolutely want to be trellised, like this Hoya Tam Dao. Anything that really has large leaves wants to be trellised. I have tried some of these bigger leaved Hoyas untrellised. I tried them like in a hanging pot. It was one of my space saving efforts and it didn't pan out. And when it comes to trellising, I find some very easy to trellis on this rabbit fence, some not so much. Some Hoyas have very stiff vines and they don't really want to bend to a rabbit fence. And in that case, they find something like a ladder, very, very useful. Some of them just really need a stick like Hoya Loki, Hoya Multiflora. You can just prop them up with a stick and they will be fine. Same goes with Hoya Lasianta. Some of them you can also try to trellis like Hoya Polinera, but in my opinion, it looks better when it's hanging and when it's trimmed quite so frequently actually, so it doesn't get too long. I don't think that a Hoya will not grow well. It may grow a little bit slower if it has big leaves and it doesn't have adequate support. They might need that support to push out the leaves. Like these plants, all of them that were growing in hanging baskets, they were still growing, but I definitely see a whole lot more growth now that they're on a trellis. And that might not just be due to a trellis, but also due to a self-watering pot. That is all for today, and that is all for the Hoya summer camp. Unfortunately, it is over, but thankfully, summer is going to be over soon. I cannot handle the heat anymore. I hope that you enjoyed all of these videos. I hope that you found them useful. They are all going to be in a playlist. Hoya Summer Camp. You can save the playlist, share it, rewatch the videos, whatever you would like. Thank you all for watching. It actually has improved my analytics a lot, so thanks for that. Now I know that I must upload twice a week. <laughs> and don't look at me like that. You're not getting up here. If you have not yet, subscribe to the channel and make sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know what Hoyas do you find are much easier to grow on the trellis, which ones are much easier to grow on a ladder, and which ones do you like to grow hanging. I will see you very soon in the next video, and that's that. Goodbye, and the kitty cat also says goodbye. You've just been way too much in this video. Well, actually, it's your debut, but whatever. It was just way too much for your debut. Debuts are supposed to be elegant and graceful where you show your best traits. 
and you have shown these people that you can climb on the, you have never climbed on this table. Never, ever, ever in your life, not that I know. Do you climb this without us knowing? Yeah, just, just try to, she's like doing the, I'm, I'm gonna sleep, I'm gonna pretend to be asleep. She's so cute. I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons, my three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, Anne Magret Munn, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Ashley Hoyas, Beth Gibson, Betsy, Katrine Molina, Daniela, Danube Daniels, Dario Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Deepin Jolly Rao, Farah, Gina K, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppenkamp, Hoji Scott, Husband, Heather, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chia, Yavin Dinot, Kara, Catherine P, Casey Gross, Kelly Ko, Kelso, Kiwi Mochi, Kristen Sherwood, Laplande Staff, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Marcelina Novosatsky, Maria West, Maris B, Martina, Alif Perday, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Moa Edmund, Neil Yang, Niha Basu, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schlieb Tropicals, Nina Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ, Plant Druid, Planting with Nat, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Robin Roos, Saloma Dal, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Sybil Williams, Tanya Tessa Martins, Tristan Thomas, The One True Kyle, Tia B, TJW, O, Trista Bailey, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Xenia Green, Youth of the Walla, Munzer the Rama, and Zlok of Nipponi. Also, big thank you to my $3 patrons, Andy H, Angelina Farnan, Anna K, Brandy Little, Brianna Phillips, Colleen Coyle, Levi, Constance, Kilone, Claudia L, Erin Keenan, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Plantilinia Ringlov, and Tang Watanas Riakul. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Kari, Christina Greengrass, Couture Helvetica, Edith W, Emilia Bronson, Joanna Pearson, Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M, Lori Ann Supermanium, Luzmin Fernandez, Neely Spicer, and Olivia Chinmuller.